Man, I got ice cream on my fingers. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome into the huddle. You found us again. Shoot the Gap, the fantasy football focus show spanning the generations gap of the 20s, 30s, and 40s. All right, man. I'm your MC, Brian the Amigo Baldwin, and it's my honor, my absolute privilege to introduce to you, Ethan, the Doc Marshall. How you doing, Ethan? I'm doing good, man. How about you? Oh man, you know, do this all. I'm doing great, dude. What we're uh, two weeks, two or three weeks away from football. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it doesn't feel right, but it, it is. It is that is this it is. I saw the coolest sign. It said uh, there's two seasons: uh, fantasy football season and waiting for fantasy football. Season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I love one of them way more than the other. <laughs> and the one that just made his appearance that you just heard that has the uh, ice cream on his fingers. The supreme gut stash himself. <laughs> Connor. My name keeps getting bigger each week. <laughs> Connor, the gut marshal. How you doing, Connor? I'm I'm feeling alive, man. Uh, you know, going back to one of our our longest standing unofficial sponsors, Tillamook Ice Cream is what's bringing tonight's particular flavor. I took out that plan going, yep. man. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. All right. And uh, so we, we're really excited uh, that, you know, you guys are here. Uh, we're doing a mock draft. I'm going to go. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing, but I just wanted to let you know we're about two minutes uh, before the draft starts and the, before the lobby opens and then the draft starts. So we're going to go and talk to you guys about that. So while we're waiting, I want to make sure and introduce our uh, two new additions to the show. We're so excited. Uh, first one is uh, the high volume music radio. A uh, nice internet internet station. Are right. you're gonna start to be able to hear our podcast on that? Uh, so we're really excited to be part of that team. It's a fantastic, fantastic radio show. Um, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out, dude. It's just it's the pride of Sunnyside. So that's right here in Houston. Um, yes, sir. Great music, uh, great topics, fantastic show. We're really excited to be part of it. Um, and our and our other new sponsor is a uh, sports host app. Go ahead, Connor. You know, I mean, that's your, uh, yeah, your thing. Shout Talk out to, to about it. shout out to sports hosts. It's this uh, new app. So if you haven't heard of it, you can still get in while the going gets hot. And shout out to High Volume Radio too because we were we were actually we got interviewed by them on the radio this <laughs> this week. Me and yeah. me and the amigo went Friday, down yeah. our doc was in a, a doctor's meeting so he was not able to make it <laughs> but he was solving the problems of the world so boys and girls around can stay safe but uh but go. no sports hosts what's great about it is it is all about bringing together sports fans no matter what sport you're into or what city you're in it's very much come one come all and i think houston is a great kind of you know, place to promote that because there's so many people from so many places and they flaunt their sports team. Great. You know, this isn't, this isn't Philadelphia, you know, you're not going to get beat up for wearing a Cowboys Jersey. Although, in, uh, you know, for the cow, for the Cowboys, yeah. I'll make the exception. They, they booed Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know, on, I mean, they destroyed their own city when they won the Super Bowl. Does that seem related? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or no, dude. I think the big thing about Philly fan and Super Bowl. Come on, Doc. You know what that is, right? Whenever he yep. ate the the Crap horse side of the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. The horse yeah, the horse crap. Yeah. yeah. How sanitary? Uh, how how good for you is that, uh, Doc? You know, I I you know the research is out, but I'm pretty sure my 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 gut. I don't know. What do you think about this gut? Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm no gastrological <laughs> expert, but I don't think you're supposed to eat stuff that passes out. <laughs> yeah. I so think that's, that's, go? that's called survival of the fittest. <laughs> yeah. You're right. That's a food chain thing. <laughs> that is a food chain yeah. thing. <laughs> you're right. Okay. It's so, okay. So Houston fans aren't Philly fans. Okay. So little extra off the sidewalk when our team wins and hey if you're a phillies fan and you want to do that sports house is perfect for that too we're all going to be around you not not eating the thing but we're, we're going to be supporting you that's how the app we works. take a video of it on our phones and posting yes. it on youtube 
<laughs> yes. I, but in all fairness, so I was I was super happy that Phillies won that year. Oh so, yeah, you know, I was rooting for them to win. Crap off the sidewalk, happy, but I was happy. Yeah. Yeah, you really found out who was Philly fans in your life. You know that I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I, it, it was the Phillies and Patriots. Everyone was a Phillies fan. That okay, day. I didn't know. I, I I had no idea that some people of mine were such strong Philly fan. I mean, you know, as soon as it happened, then I'll come out, come out the colors. You know? Oh, oh yes, yeah, yes, so, yeah. So so yeah, so that was that was kind of an interesting thing. But um, so that's sports hosts apps, right, man? That's uh, yep. a lot of lot and of cool people. Um, we're we're I'm I'm gonna try to provide a link for both the podcast we're on and the app in the description of this episode. So go ahead Sweet. and look for that. We're excited to, uh, for them to be part of our team and vice versa, versa visa, and all that nice stuff. All right. So uh, now we're at, uh, dude, this is our 12th show, guys. It's a perfect dozen. Fantasy football knowledge, dude, just out there waiting to be consumed, man. Pretty sweet, huh, man? Do we do we want to do another football? All, all guys, think of a think of a famous football player who had number twelve. Brady. Oh, come okay. on, man. <laughs> there, there are other, there are others. Muchi Norris, Muchi Norris. Are you waiting on me? Because yeah, he has, he has one. He has, he has one of these right now. Gardner Minshew? No. <laughs> He, okay, he doesn't always have he doesn't always have a mustache. Oh, shit. That, is not, that is not helping me out at all. He's a quarterback that's arguably in the same conversation for players of his generation as Tom Brady. Well, why don't you just give me the initials, dude? I mean, his name yeah. starts with an A. Oh, hey, come on. Yes. Yeah. You know what's funny, dude? I heard this on a, on a radio. I can't take credit for this. I thought it was so funny. But the actual quarterbacks in Green Bay are A-Rod and J-Lo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that funny? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, dude. I thought that was great. Uh, yeah, man. So, yeah, Aaron Rodgers. So, yeah, I think he has a beard now. Um, but then everyone, as you're watching the show, you know, if, if you're entertained by uh, three generational beef heads just bantering about, you know, please hit the like and subscribe button. And we'll feel the love, and you'll get every every episode to help you up to the draft and through the season. So make sure and hit that like and subscribe, man. We, we want to help you win. Uh, yeah, man, that's what we're here for. You know, um, you know, we're here to have fun. You know, talk about some fantasy football. But uh, you know, uh, you see me glancing off is because our draft has just started. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm the fifth pick, um, and uh, Connor is the eighth pick, and Ethan is the tenth pick. Yeah, uh, brave man, Ethan. Brave man. Ethan. At the turn. But what's really cool is that I think Ethan's going to show you why you shouldn't be afraid of it. You know, because everybody thinks like, oh, man, I get the 10th pick. You know, it's going to stink and blah, blah, blah. You know, they're just so upset. Um, I think uh, during this draft, we're actually going to see uh, Ethan show you why it's not scary, you know, to, to well, get see, that. <laughs> I like your confidence, uh, Brian. I, I, I appreciate it. Well, dude, I mean, I've done a couple of drafts with you. Now, of course, when we first started the show. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you weren't sure about who was on what, what team, you know, yeah. you know, that was a little nervy. That was a little nervy. Okay. But uh, uh, some, some first podcast jitters. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, but you're, but you're on your game now. We, we've done a couple. And, see that, that, and that's the thing guys is that we're doing all these drafts. You know, you're able to see the mock drafts. You, you're going to be able to and see how our, um, our approach changes as we go through this. And it's gonna help yeah. you guys with y'all's approach and everything like that. So uh, Doc is, is actual proof positive that uh, listening to the show and doing mock drafts help. Okay, okay. and so uh, so today uh, we're going to see last out. Actually, let's talk about last episode. We talked about our love targets and these were players that we were building our strategy around and that we have, that we have to have coming out of the draft. I mean, these are ones that we love them and we have to have them. So if you haven't checked it out, Check out last episode. You'll be happy that you did. Really excited that you did. Um, but uh, um, we also did a mock draft and while we were discussing these players. So you got two shots of information in one. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. We're going to be we're going to be giving you some information about the training camps. And also Connor's got a really cool where's the, where he's got some fresh meat, fresh meat for where's fresh the beef meat. segment. Yeah, fresh meat. Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to be doing mock drafts from this show on until the mock draft uh, season is over. So, uh, as I said in the last one, I'm going to say it again because I thought it was a lot of fun. We're running a mock. That was fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so let's just go ahead and uh, jump into the show here. So, but first. Where is the beef? <laughs> Connor, that's you, man. Where is the beef, dude? What you got? Q. Vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so um yeah it's uh what, what is that uh, no it's it's <laughs> Oh god, I can't. I can't I, it's that stuff that uh, tofu. That's what it is. Oh. It's tofu. <laughs> that's what it is, dude. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah. It's not words of beefy. No it's flavor of its own. Yeah, it's tofu. Um, normally, guys, you know we. Uh, so, okay, we're gonna go and just jump straight to uh, quick shots now. Um, and normally we start off with the Reaper meter, but uh, which is a way for us to gauge if there's going to be a full season. But uh, you know when I was doing, I was get everything together i was like you know i couldn't see anything that's going to like make us change off of uh was it one one and a half from yeah here I'll, I'll give you all the reaper meter there you go <laughs> was that just one <laughs> I, I i agree that's where i'm at <laughs> yes what what yeah what what no more than that yeah you did you did that's a pretty sweet that's pretty sweet um yeah and uh so I don't know if there's a reason to bring it up other than to do that. So that's kind of cool. Um, now, I know that uh, last week, um, Ethan, did you uh, you watched Hard Knocks? Did you watch uh, this past? Uh, no, I haven't uh, got a chance to watch the second episode. I, I know that they finally get because I, I um, had it just streaming. And I didn't actually sit down and watch it. But the last about 10 minutes, they actually started. You started seeing some hits and some plays. And that was all I needed. I didn't go back and rewatch it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I got my oh, knee. Oh, oh. Hey. I'm good for a week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no. Um, but wait, th what they did was that um, what, the part that you saw is that uh, they, you know once they got past, you know, they used the first episode to get you know show you what the COVID thing they all did. Uh, but what they did is that um, there was a section, probably what you saw, where they uh, just glorified Austin Eckler, right? Mm -hmm. And dude, I think he's awesome. I love Austin Eckler. I drafted him. I think he's great. You know, I drafted him right here in this. In would this you call right. him awesome Eckler? Uh, yeah, well, I would if another show wasn't already saying that, but yeah, I would. <laughs> oh, I got Mark Andrews in the fifth round. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I'll see you out there. I'll see you. Uh, see, I'm not a Mark Andrews fan at all. I'm not. I'm sorry. I I, I can absorb all of that. I'm, I'm the yin to your yang when it comes to Mark Andrews because oh, I am okay. oh, I'm definitely a, a fan. I know. Ooh. Man. I, I yeah. know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> David Montgomery. All right. And so, okay. And, uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, one thing that I would notice though is that uh, after that episode, Austin Eckler started getting drafted like, dude, like high. I, and I start like I saw him in the first round after that episode. Man. So, uh, so everybody who's listening to us, guys, the gals, you know, please calm down. You know, uh, you know, Hard Knocks is awesome and it gives you insight on the train on the training camp. But Damn dude, it's you! Edited. It's edited, okay? So just you know, keep it in your shorts a little bit. There, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Good, 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 good pick, Doc. Good pick. Uh, who was that? Uh, he got Kyler in the sixth. Oh, that was just let me. Mean. Let me look at this. Let me look I'm at this sorry, team. Man. No, do like it. Looking at. Do it. Do oh, it if you have to. I would do it everybody, too. Everybody, we're that about lineup. to hear a Pat and Connor cry. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. No, see, honestly though, I was tempted to go Lockett or Metcalf because they're staring me in the sixth round. Um, but I don't know who to go for between them. I don't know who to bet on for the season. I, I really don't. And at that. Makes me nervous because if you if you pick Metcalf and then Lockett's the one, it's like duh, man. Lockett was the one. Then you pick Lockett and Metcalf is the one. You're like duh, man. Metcalf was the one. Yes. <laughs> well, and you also didn't mention that um, the guy hasn't got reinstated yet, but as soon as he does, I'm sure he's going to be a, a Seattle yeah. Seahawk, and that's uh, Josh Gordon. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's just, what's the that receiving core even harder to figure out. Dude, I set you up. <laughs> What's his nickname? Josh Gordon. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah! Can we get can we get that again for people in the back, please? Flash. Ah! It was not worth listening to twice, man. I'm so no, sorry. It was. It was Whenever I do it. that, it's it's because I we don't hear the first part on my end, so that means it doesn't go into the video. Gotcha. So gotcha, literally gotcha. for the people in the back before very nice people watching I'm, I'm i'm looking out for them you know making sure they're included they're in the yeah. conversation gotcha gotcha I wanna you know, go as i was i i it, it didn't matter where i went i was going to piss someone off because you know who else i was looking at other than uh murray with that pick there who's that uh who'd you just pick brian oh uh, i picked kareem hunt 
Yes, I was also looking at Cream Hunt, but I figured I just picked up Montgomery, and and I, I'm already regretting picking up Murray because I'm thinking I could have waited several rounds, gotten a great quarterback, and gotten more stacked at the wide receiver position, and gotten like Robert Woods or uh, Scary Terry or someone like that, Terry McLaurin. Yeah, okay. going back to talking about oh you know with Lockett and Metcalf like he's the one no he's the one that's what I liked about Scary Terry and why I chose him over DK is because it's like he's he's the one you know yeah and they're yeah. saying that Alex I mean Alex Smith is out on the field practicing right he's Man. he's out there with the team Sad, okay Thaddeus Moss was cut <laughs> from the Washington football team and I'm sad I'm sad about it. I was really excited. I really wanted to believe that there was a reality in which he scored 20 touchdowns his rookie season because Alex Smith loves the tight end and he would be the best tight end. And you know, but that means more targets for Scary Terry, right? Right. right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, that was actually one of the things I was going to talk about. You know that that actually him getting waved. You know, uh, Thaddeus, Thaddeus Moss getting waved. You know. That basically meant, you know, that, uh, you know, two people got cut in that one move, you know, both uh, Thaddeus Moss and uh, Connor. Mm-hmm. Cut you deep. Cut you deep. Yeah, because yeah, if, you, if you've if you been watching the show from the beginning, that was like his secret. Like my secret guy was Antonio Gibson, which everybody knows about him. So wait on that. And then now we have Thaddeus Moss. You know, that was the that was the secret. But that was my secret. He might land someplace, dude. I might need him. I mean, like uh, Houston Texans signed sign Thaddeus Moss. No, no, no. Right Texas now. Right. <laughs> The Texans don't need him. No, no, they have they have a, more problems. They have other problems than him. Um, but uh, like um, the Giants would be a good spot for him, I think. Yeah, with even uh, with, with Ingram. Hunt. Well, but Ingram is I mean, dude. I mean, like he's uh, like he's running and everything at like that, but he's always going to get hurt. You know, you don't think that Thaddeus Moss That's would fair. be a good a good backup? You know, I mean, yeah, he'll start the season. Uh, you know, uh, Ethan or not uh, yeah, Ethan? Ethan's picking uh, Ingram. Ingram will uh, uh, will start as the the tight end, but I mean this is a tight end too. You're talking about you're talking about a don't breakout guy. Don't want to pick Breida. Ah, damn it! My I'm Jedi sorry, mind dude. Didn't work. Michael Gallup too. Damn it! He was my contingency plan. Gallup, really? Dude, yeah. Gallup. I would not pick Gallup ever. You wouldn't. Ever, you yeah. wouldn't touch him with a ten foot was, pole. I was gonna go. I was going to go J.K. Dobbins, but I had just picked up um, uh, Brown, and I didn't want to have another – I didn't want to go two Baltimore guys back to back. You know, what do you guys think about that? Um, there's been a lot of talk about, like, um, you know, when we first started talking about drafts, we were talking about how it's okay. Um, it can be okay to pick up some, you know, a couple of players together, and just traditionally it is, you know. I mean, like, if you had – uh, Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes are real happy about that. I mean, to Connor himself is trying for the stack of D Hop and Murray. Um, but with COVID, I mean, does that make you a little scary? You know, that maybe like if, you know, the backup punter brings in, a, you know, the COVID and it knocks out, let's see, if you have the stack of Murray and, and Hopkins and that knocks those guys out, I mean, that's two, two main guys that are out. You know, I mean, are, well, are you worried about that? I think we should be concerned, but I think what it should really be discourage us from doing is staying away from we, we should stay away from positions that aren't optimal for fantasy in a stacking position so like unless you have like for god god forbid garoppolo is your quarterback but if you have garoppolo and kittle or if you have mahomes and kelsey or murray and hopkins or lamar and andrews like i had last year like that generates a lot of points but if it's not the quarterback in his main but I mean, you know, you, you could even make the argument like if you had Mark uh, Ingram and Lamar Jackson last year, that was great for fantasy, right? You know, but that might I don't I don't think I would consider doing that because that would that would be hedging a lot of capital in the Ravens offense. So, so what you're saying is that it's OK to do if you're going to get if the time when they're together, they're going to produce really high. It's OK yeah. to take that risk. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because I don't think that. I don't think that there's going to be as many um, Corona cases when the season starts. How bad has it been in the NFL? Cause, I mean, not the NFL, NBA. Uh, have they had a, an I, issue with no. cases in the NBA? No. And is, is the NFL um, doing a similar approach with the whole bubble thing? 
You know, man, if you watch the uh, in, the uh, Rockets playoffs, you would swear that Russell has it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where is he? Come on, man. And just to just to chime in though, like I I mean I'm just realizing that I've got a Murray and Drake stack here. Yes. Um, what what makes me okay with that is that I believe that that's going to be a high powered offense. When I'm okay with stacking, um, uh, you know, put, putting a lot of eggs in that basket, how big is the basket? You know what I mean? Like if you're going to stack, stack with the Ravens, stack with the Chiefs, stack with um, the Cardinals, or even, um, you know, it's more of a more of a shot in the dark. But the Buccaneers, I think it's it's not a uh, a far-fetched idea that they're going to be a high-powered offense. I mean, do you have that receiving core and Tom Brady, you know? Oh yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm right there with you. See, I, I'm of the feeling that that is a false narrative. Okay. I mean, it's something to be concerned about, but it's the same thing as somebody who's going to get injured, you know, cause you have just as much the chance of getting co or a player has just as much a chance of getting COVID as they do getting hurt. Yeah. You know, being, a, you know, in a game, which is like a, which is described as like a car crash every Sunday, you know? Yeah. So, um, so the thing is, is that if you draft well, if you do your research, watch shows like us, okay, you know, so you get values, then you'll be stacked enough to where you can withstand hits, even hits like there to your number one QB and to your number one wide receiver. You can still t- take those hits, withstand them, because it's not forever. It's not like they're dead. You know, it's just they're off for about two weeks. They're young. Connor knows, you know, that that when you're younger, you know, you can get over stuff really fast, you know, and so it, it doesn't last as long, you know, so. Like trying to slide down railing and then falling and almost injuring yourself. <laughs> well, you know, the, that's what, you know, but the point is, is that, no, I wouldn't be worried about it. I would not be worried about it. But, um, you know, um, there there was some news today uh, that broke uh, that, and this was kind of cool about, about watching a show like us, because we, uh, as you guys know, we, we put this out Sunday night, Monday morning, so that we can get a little bit of a jump ahead of all those other fantasy shows so you can understand what these uh, impacts are, because stuff happens all the time. You don't want to wait, wait around for it. Uh, but Earl Thomas cut from Baltimore, man. He was acting a fool, you know, on the, on the, uh, the camp, man. What's your thoughts on that there, Connor? Earl Thomas is going full Antonio Brown. <laughs> you never go full Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He fought with a teammate, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And like the Ravens have like this, like council, like within the football team. And like, he, like fought like a member of the council and the council was like, you are banished from the land. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, ah, okay. I see. It's, okay. Well, um, he's been, um, yeah. Have you heard about that, Ethan? Uh, yeah, I heard about it when you mentioned it earlier. That was the first time I heard about it. So what yeah, do you, you think picked that's... Antonio Gibson early, Brian? Yeah, of course. I have to now. <laughs> okay, dude, it's... Yeah, exactly. yeah. So you can have, fucking eight running backs on your team you have antonio gibbs and kareem hunt Le'Veon bell those are all on his bench and then he has Honor aaron track. jones austin eckler derrick henry wow. brian's that guy that goes to kroger's and buys all the toilet paper because he hears that there's a pandemic happening wow. just like some guys buy the toilet paper brian oh, buys wow. all the running backs <laughs> yeah i think so man point is dude is that, I, is that solid, big... uh, solid core it's but dude, it's COVID, man. You know, I mean, I I um I really do have I value you know probably to my own detriment. I value running backs more than I value wide receivers. Why? I think that running backs are going to be used in every game. Wide receivers, if they can get ahead, they're not going to use them in the second half. They're gonna they're gonna they're going to uh, the coach is going to sit them and put the second stringer in. You know, but with running backs, they're always going to be using those guys. You know, if they're ahead. They're, they're they're cutting down time uh, they're they're cutting time and they're gaining yards you know and if they're behind then they use that to break up the pass they're always going to use running backs yeah so so wah <laughs> wah Connor wah That's I'm right. actually Every- trying to help you because you're just going to end up playing shit stick <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That's you're what right. I did yeah. last year when I drafted yeah. that many running backs. Yeah, okay. And let, let's, let me explain that, okay? Because that's actually – that is a uh, my brother, uh, Steve Baldwin. That's an original from him. Shout out to Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah my brother. Yeah, he, okay. Like I, like I told you in the last episode, you're going to be hearing me mention him a lot because he and I talk a lot, and we talk a lot about fantasy football. But the reason why he called it shit stick was that um, 
It's like, <laughs> it's like you know, when you pick up a, a stick that has poop on the end of it and you flip it in the air, you know, chances are, you know, with our luck, we always catch it with the end with the poop in the air, you know, with the yeah. end with the poop, you know, you, you with the shit on the stick, you know, so rarely you're going to flip in the air and catch it, you know, where there's no poop on it, you know, and so whenever you pick all these little things like what Connor's talking about, like I'm assuming Antonio Gibson being the perfect example, you're playing a game of shit stick. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's funny. That's uh that's Connor. Yeah. So that was awesome, dude. Yeah. But um, yeah, but the, uh, with Thomas, uh, doc, with Thomas being cut, what does that do with uh, Baltimore's defense? Does that change your opinion of him? Yeah. I mean, Baltimore's defense was getting drafted too high for me really to be interested in them in the first place. Um, if anything, maybe it'll make them take a hit to where I'm now willing to to look into drafting them. Um, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, honestly. Okay. All right. So you're saying like, it's just going to be, they're going to be able to, it's the scheme, not the players necessarily. Correct. Yes. Yes. That's probably, that's probably some truth to that. Cause whenever T sizzle left, they still kept going, you know? So yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, so on uh, Friday, man, um, Friday, do a lot of stuff happen on Friday. Uh, but uh, Tyree Kill, man, hurt his hamstring, you know, in practice, dude. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they said that they're going to – that he would return in a few days. But, um, you know, my question is that um, the last thing we heard about McCall Hardman was that he was being expected to be the main returner again this year. So you're thinking, oh, great, he's boomer bust again. But with this information, does that change? I mean, any of your outlook on all the other wide receivers? Connor, you've always said that it's always been Tyreek Hill and then nobody else. You know, mm-hmm. Does that change your opinion? Yeah, it does. Uh, I think we can expect Mikol to take a step in year two. Yeah? But, uh, I mean, I it sucks because, you know, I, I like Tyreek. And I uh, it, it bums me out to see him not be healthy. But I owned him last year, and he, he, he gets injured sometimes, you know. Whenever... Whenever you know you you you're that physical of a player, you know, and he he gets hit a lot. Guys are tr- always trying to nail him. You know. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, because yeah, he's he's exactly what you said. He's a speedster. The only way to get to him is right off the line, and that's usually with a hard hit. You know, if not, he's he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. So so uh, so you know. See ya. So, see they like I remember reading that they they uh, that the uh, Kansas City signed a um an actual punt returner like an actual like like uh vet uh, kicker kick returner and pro punt return the guy said that he was there specifically so that mccall hardman can have a bigger role i wouldn't i, I don't know what happened to that guy <laughs> okay i don't know if they cut him or what happened to him but they might resign him again if, they, if that happened so they, they could put a hardman there because tyreek hill started to show some wear man i mean would you pick him up in the second round no uh, uh what about you doc uh, no, I'm not picking up a wide receiver that um, that early. Third, not Tyree not Kill, that one. Not in the Hill. third. Tyreek Hill in the third. Would you in the third? No. Uh, I would consider because I've taken a wide receiver in the third before. I picked up. Um, I probably you know if I was late in the third, maybe I didn't like a running back there. I pick up Galladay or or um, uh, Adam Thielen or someone like that. What about Chris Godwin? Would would, would mean, you take what, him in the third? I, I'm not. I'm not big on the uh, uh, on betting on the the Tampa Bay wide receiver core. I don't know what that's going to look like. I did that last year with Mike Evans, and it sucked. And uh, I mean, it sucks some of the time. Most of the time, it's most sucked. of the time. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Just throwing that out there. Um, we all we also heard about uh, Devonte Adams. Now this is a little old news because uh, he got injured. He injured his ankle on Wednesday, right? Uh, in practice, right? But uh, he did uh, come back on Saturday. That's the new news. So yesterday he he was back in practice. All right. So, but you know it does make you realize you know how ridiculous that first pick of the draft of that Green Bay did. You know. So yeah. in fact, I would even say it's like I think it's something that Gene Gene you know Gene definitely would not say this about that pick. I love it. If <laughs> anything, that pick, that pick uh, should conjure this sound. <laughs> All right, and then this is, and this is Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I don't get no respect, no respect yeah. at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got one in this situation. All perspectives covered. There. Wow, dude, we almost ran the full uh, soundboard <laughs> just on one take. How about that? <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. 
Well, you know, I could tell you that Alan Lazard showed flashes last year. Showed flashes last year. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Flash, flash. <laughs> I'm trying to think who am I gonna pick with the absolute last pick of the draft. Oh, you burned that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh, where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. Um. Wow. Look at that, dude. Oh, do we have a lot of? Yeah, we have a lot of auto pickers. Okay. All right. I was like, what? Dude, why is the uh, kickers picked through? <laughs> I was like, hey. Um. So okay. I, Sorry, that was my pick there. That was the 14th pick. That's when I pick. That's when I go usually go for kickers, and usually there's a lot bigger selection than that, unless there's a lot of. Oh no, I don't know, man. Uh, we'll figure there was out a later. slight run that happened right after I I picked a kicker because I knew it was I was going to have the absolute last pick of the draft, and there probably wasn't going to be anyone there that I wanted. I think that's what started it. Oh, did you pick that like in the 13th or 14th? Uh. Beginning of the fourteenth. Oh, I did wow. mine in the thirteenth. I think I started the run. Oh, you started the mm. run. Yeah. Well, well, I I went and got Gonzalez because I was like, I can get Gonzalez now, and he's like a tier above Sly, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That and that's who I end up uh, getting, but I don't know. We don't know. Uh, it, that that whole uh, Cal- Carolina offense is a new thing. You know, it really yes. is. Uh, so, um, but we know he's a good kicker, um, and that he can kick uh, long kick the long ball so you know it was worth a shot in uh yeah. in my, my opinion uh, especially since matt gay was gone and all the other all the good ones are gone so i'll, I'll have to look at the uh black box and see what happened there <laughs> but um uh you know do you, what i just read i thought this was kind of interesting is that um damian harris man he continues to stand out in camp uh they said that he's doing a nice job uh picking up blocks he's comfortable running routes you know with sony michelle probably starting the year on the pup, you know, Lamar Miller, not ready to go. Damian Harris. Is that somebody to take a shot at? Yeah, that's been, he's uh, one of our last drafts we did. I picked him with my last pick. How'd you feel? I felt good about it. I mean, you know, there's a couple guys, you know, cause um, the news on um, Chris Carson has never been positive. It seems this mm. entire off season. So right. you got Hyde sitting there. You know, yeah. if you yeah. pick him up yeah. in the last round or off waivers, someone like Carlos Hyde might be worth looking at. Um, Miles Sanders had a mystery lower body injury, right? Yeah. So is yeah. Austin Scott worth looking at? Because you might be able to get a couple games out of him if, if Sanders isn't isn't going. You know, uh, Boston Scott's actually a guy that uh, made, is what made me nervous about Sanders because I don't think that yeah. the, the coach has never really, like, leaned on one guy. You know, I know Sanders took took off last year, but uh, so did Boston Scott <laughs> at the end of yeah. the year. So, you know, when you have two of those guys and you already got Miles Sanders, a little gimpy, you know, you, you're right. It might be, you know, it might be the great Scott, you know, great Scott, you know, that's what it might be, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, good point on that. Um, So you don't think that, uh, well, Connor, did you, did you weigh in on Damian Harris? I, I was, uh, I am I am still of the of the don't draft Patriots players rule, but I mean it's a fifteenth pick, bro. Take your take your shot. Take your shot on who you want to yeah. take it on. Yeah, you you know? yeah, guys. I've been I've been going after. Uh, and sometimes in the fifteenth pick, I'll go pick up um, uh, Newton. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, you know, talk, you know, talk about. If you're trying to go for a, a Kyler Murray or a, you know get that rushing upside, dude. Newton's sitting there in the fifteenth round. See and now he I'm, doesn't I'm have not... any weapons. Um, I would call Julian Edelman and Muhammad Sanu weapons. Sanu, dude, is the reason why I'm worried about Edelman. I've been hearing a yeah, lot exactly. of good things about Sanu. From me, <laughs> drafted Edelman because that dude was the pillar of consistency for my team last year, and I, I think that um, Newton Newton's quarterback play isn't going to be any worse than Brady's was last year. Brady's quarterback play last year was not good at all. So what, what, can, what, what, you know, are we going to get a downgrade from there? Doesn't seem like that from what they're saying in camp, but. Yeah. And I mean, just to, just to go and throw some more fuel on that fire, man, that um, uh, I believe it was either yesterday or Friday that uh, Jared Stidham is reportedly uh, battling some leg discomfort. And so yeah. it, it was actually Fig Newton and Brian Hoyer that was sharing snaps. Well, Prince uh, Cam Cam yeah. was, uh, Apparently, beat writers said he was looking the best out of the practice because they said no quarterbacks were flashing. 
Yeah. No quarterbacks for what? Look, no. Oh. no quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all say when we go over our teams while we have the uh, screen in front of us? Because the yeah. draft is a yeah, that's right. Bully. That's right. Okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, Connor, why don't you start? You don't ever start your your you know. Why don't you go? So ahead. I uh, I was actually feeling kind of creative this time. I went running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, running back, tight end, and I don't think I've done that before. So with my first pick, uh, I picked Joe Mixon and I picked him over Dalvin Cook. I was I was staring at Joe Mixon or Dalvin Cook. And I I really I really wanted to give Mixon the the run at it at this one because I was uh, I was thinking back about how he has never fumbled. And I just think he's he's the man, you know, he can he can make a a step forward because he had the worst offensive line in the league last year. Yeah, no, and they beefed up the line. Absolutely. Yeah, they beefed up the line. And, and, and last one was really... <laughs> <laughs> in the Big Bill's line. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, but uh, also, I've been reading a lot, of, a lot of good things about uh, about Joe Donkey. You know, uh-huh. so, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We need to get. A... <laughs> I need to record that one for Absolutely. Joe Burrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The donkey. Yeah, not because he's a donkey, but just of his last. That's name. what Burrow it means. Clearly translates to that. Es, for our for all our Espanol listeners out there. Yeah, say habla Espanol. Habla yeah, that's, Espanol. That's the Texas hammer. Yeah, but um, no, the uh, but yeah, Joe Burrow's has been showing really good. So yeah, I I really like uh, Joe Mixon. Um, and I'm assuming that's probably like if he was there, uh, Doc, would you have done Joe Mixon and you know King Drake or Joe Mixon and Josh Jacobs instead? I was actually um, hoping that I could have gone Mixon and Drake. That's what I've done historically. But to me, Mixon and uh, or not Mixon, um, Drake and Jacobs is is that's not no slouch either. But I like the Mixon pick. I. I don't know what. What about uh, here? I think here's a bigger point of conversation. Mixon over, um, my, my why is my my brain like Cook? mixing over? Why? What do you? What What are your thoughts on that, oh, Brian? Over who mixing over who? Uh, uh, one more time. Dalvin Cook. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, dude, I would not do that. I would do Dalvin Cook. Absolutely, yeah, because he's he's technically in a contract year now. And if he wants to get the big money, which he wants to get the big money, he's going to play hard. He's going to play through injury. So, yeah, man, I, I and he's set up in a situation where the uh, it's all it's already shows. It's already been shown that it's going to be um, uh, it's it's run positive, run focused offense. All right. He's already showed that how durable he is. And then. Um, yeah. Dude, I think he's shown a lot more durability than he had in the past. I thought he was going to be out by week seven. I mean, that Mixon man. Mixon can play a whole sixteen games. Cook's yeah, never I, done that. Yeah, I understand that. Alpha, um, alpha. But you could argue that for the first half of the season, was he really there? <laughs> <laughs> like that was. I but but that, we don't want to focus on that. Obviously, right. you want to focus on what they did the last half of the year and what Mixon showed. And I think it was more the coaching staff waking up and realizing what they had in Mixon. And I just need to give Mixon the ball, right? That's, they realize that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, I think it's a, it it is a perfect gut pick to go Mixon over Cook because it's some, how do you say, guts to do that. (laughs) Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, it's not something I would do, no. The sounds that, that makes me more sure of it. So I, I, I went, uh, I went Joe Mixon, my first pick in in gutsy fashion. Then I got Julio Jones as my wide receiver too, and uh, I've I've been thinking about it. Um, there's there's certain guys that they have really high ceilings for scoring, but they're not matchup proof. There's certain guys that if you see them on your lineup, you are not worried no matter who they play against, or or what condition they're in. And Julio Jones is certainly one of those guys. Like, I do not want to play against Julio Jones because I, I can't rationale to myself in my head a situation in which he doesn't put up at least, like, 12 to 15 on me, right? You know, like, Amari Amari Cooper is like, he could put 40, he could put four, you know? 
Eh, yeah, but there's also that impending Calvin Ridley breakout. I mean, uh, Julio Jones is on the, you know, uh, as far as like age goes, you know, he's getting older. Uh, Ridley is supposedly supposed to come out. I mean, no, I, I mean, I, I'm just throwing a, a different uh, view on it. But mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I, the, the, I, here's a way to look at it. Julio Jones is going about where um, Mike Evans went last year. And people were like, there's no way Godwin is going to overtake Mike Evans. There's no way he's going to be drafted ahead of Evans. And what happened this year? Godwin is now there. I think that could easily happen with Ridley and Jones because uh, I'm I've been tempted with Ridley. So, um, but I think that is a surefire pick. I get what you're saying. It's a matchup proof pick. Yeah, and I can see why you were so mad about me picking so many t- uh, running backs because uh, <laughs> yeah, with um, with Duke Johnson and and Jonathan Taylor uh, and and AJ Dillon, you're almost in the wide receiver. You're almost uh, zero RB. You almost you almost went to a zero RB. Well, if yeah. someone drafts eight running backs, that's more <laughs> likely to happen, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'll I'll uh, I'll trade you a uh, cream hunt for uh, <laughs> Kenny Galladay. Yeah, that's why I draft. <laughs> no, I'm, if if you're gonna be if you're gonna be crass and offer me trash <laughs> for good things, I'm gonna let you burn. But no, in seriousness, I I do draft a lot of wide receivers because I know that I can trade. I can probably trade you. Uh, Crowder and Jalen Rager for like, you know, Bell and Gibson or something like that. You know, man. Uh, one thing to think about though is that, um, like, I, I, I think that there's also there's a lot of wide receivers that, um, you know, what, dude, I, I, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. That's not that's not that's not a sp- uh, bad possibility. So I see I see you working. I see you working. I really like the Duke Johnson pick. I think that yeah. Duke Johnson pick is something that is being undervalued and underrated, and that that actually could be an art like that could be your RB two right there, uh, Duke Johnson, in two weeks. You know, into the season. You know, you wouldn't even have to worry about you know anything, and you might have Taylor breaking out by that time. So you might yeah. have. Two, two, I mean, you might have a RB one and Taylor and RB two and Johnson right now. You know? Yeah, so, I was really excited and, to get Taylor uh, in, in in the fourth because I don't I don't always get him. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you're definitely gonna have the guy that has the best um, the best thighs. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, have that. Okay. So with AJ Dillon. Um, okay. I mean, you know, that's that's my that's my fifteenth round pick. You know, I'm I'm taking a shot just just like. You know, uh, Cam Newton or those other guys, like, they have the upside. But uh, for me, the thing with A.J. Dillon is uh, he could be, like, the red zone specialist. Yeah. 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 Okay. Are you guys taking screenshots of this? I'm out. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of mine. Let's go ahead and do your team. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, because uh, I, I don't – my laptop I'm using has old technology. <laughs> I don't think I have the ability to That's do fine. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I, I do like your team, dude. I do like your team. Yeah, hey, y'all are uh, polar opposites um, because I'm looking at your team right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I I have to admit I did go a little <laughs> a little run back here crazy. A I was little? trying to do that. I was doing the show, man, and you know, and, and, yeah. and what I've been doing, the way I've been drafting is I've been going off value and how I rate things. And so whenever I'm looking at a certain certain round and I see something, you know, uh, my brother's always telling me this. He's like, "Bro, you can't get everything." You can't get everything, right? He always tells me that you have to make some sacrifices. You can't get everything, right? But I have such a, a love for running backs that anytime I see a running back in a value position, I throw away my whole plan and I grab that running back, you know, because I think it's going to be a, a big thing. So, yeah. So, yeah, I kind of went there, you know, so, but I'll, I'll go and tell you. I did um, for um, my uh, quarterback, who I'm saying is my backup quarterback. The way it filled out, it filled out as, as the yeah. – uh, it, which is uh, Tom Brady. And then I have uh, Adam Thielen as my wide receiver one. Robert Woods as my wide receiver two. Uh, my Arby's are uh, Derek Henry and Austin Eckler. Um, and my um, tight end is Hunter Henry. Um, and then my flex is Aaron Jones. And then on the bench, this is where I went crazy. I'm so sorry, guys. I mean, yeah. I, I have like, to. I like it. Uh, dude, I'm. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm going to run it. Uh-huh. Go. Can we hear that again for the for the people? I love it. 
<laughs> Dude, I, I'm, I'm literally the running back emporium of, of the yeah. league. You know, running backs, running backs, running backs. You need a running back. I got you a running back. Don't don't yeah. let you know. Don't let your tight ends know you're cheating on them, Brian. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I have gone off the tight end thing, haven't I? Oh my yeah. god, only two. Yeah, only two. Only two. Yeah, yeah only two. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so my my bench is Le'Veon Bell, uh, Kareem Hunt, uh, Antonio Gibson. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, who's going to be my starting quarterback, um, and then Chris Herndon, and then Brandon Cooks. That rounds out my uh, my bench. My kicker is Joey Sly, and uh, my defense is Buffalo. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that pick. Yeah. Man, I, I have to say, um, you know, to me, it to me, I, what, when I look at it, I kind of see the same thing that I saw on Connor's team, but with uh, wide receivers versus running back, right? Like, yes. So you got. Thielen and you feel I feel confident about I mean Thielen he's in a he's in an offense that's not super pass heavy but he's the clear number one and they digs just left so you got those vacated targets Woods is gonna Woods is gonna do Woods which is great solid but uh then you got Cooks (laughs) (laughs) okay that guy could go off I could easily see that guy going off Fuller's made of glass he could also go off the able to perform list because he gets Dude, injured guys there's literally no way in a real draft i'd be doing this okay so yeah. <laughs> i pray to god I, i'm serious i would never go this running back heavy dude. If, <laughs> let's look at it this way um when, when you picked up bell where you picked up bell you could have picked up uh, i'm guessing it, uh metcalf or lockett or um or a better quarterback i literally thought i was picking up bell for my flex Okay, seriously, I lost oh, track. Really? <laughs> I lost track. I lost track. Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, because I'm not used to getting Aaron Jones there. Aaron Jones doesn't fall yeah, to the third. third. Yeah. Okay, and and that's what. And so I'm sitting here, you know, talking about all this stuff that we're bringing up, and you know, uh, engaging with you guys and listening to y'all's awesome points and trying to get gain information because I learn a lot from you guys. You know, just you know, in this show. You know, I myself learned from you guys, you know, and so and I'm watching just cruising along and then I'm like, oh, look, a running back in a valuable position. Click. That would be good yeah. for my flex. And my God, I, I, I do have a, a question with with Hunter Henry, because I've seen I've seen you all go both ways on him. How, what, how do you all feel about that? Because, I mean, uh, Hunter Henry's an eighth round pick, right? Seventh, yeah. eighth round. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, I like Hunter Henry because um, whenever he was on the show or when he's on the show, when he's uh, when he's actually in a game, he's unstoppable. Right. And mm. I'm always a, I'm always of the, the, the feeling and the belief that the uh, there's two uh, best friends oh, well, other than you know, the line, whatever. But as far as offensive weapons, the best offensive weapons for a new quarterback, a rookie quarterback or a new quarterback to a system is a running back and a tight end. Okay, and so th- we have both. We have a running back there, and we have it, and we have uh, you know the the uh, the or we have the tight end. That's what I have both of my here. I guess yeah, that's yeah, all. I, I, like, I like it. I, I like it. I like Hunter Henry. So you'd say I'm uh, I'm guessing Waller was there too, right? Both Waller oh. and Henry was. There. You're going Henry over Waller. Dude, I'm staying away from Waller, man. Away, like as far away from him, dude. If he was 15th pick, I don't think I would pick up Waller. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not a fan of his anymore. I mean, I, I love his ability. I love what he could do. However, I don't like Moreau, okay, who always is – he comes in on the goal line, so he's always stealing touchdowns that way. And then also there's Henry Ruggs, who it's already been reported that he's going to be like an A-B role. That he's, he's a jack-of-all-trades. They're putting him in weird spots. They're making him work. They're going to be uh, throwing the ball more to Jacobs. So Jacobs, you know, he's going to be up there. So, you know, I, yeah. I don't know, you know, and then you also have um, all the other receivers that are that are well now that were sick, you know, that were injured whenever he was breaking out. And whenever I owned him, Connor didn't Connor doesn't agree with me here. But I, my feeling was that whenever I owned him was that whenever the other play, the other running back wide receivers were were uh, exploding, then Waller had a bad game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm scared of it. Yeah, well, I like it. I like it. it. It's definitely. It was a. It was a uh, opposite of zero RB strategy. <laughs> Almost zero wide receiver. Yeah, zero WR. Yeah, and it would never happen again, guys. <laughs> I don't think that would happen. Thank again. you. I do, seriously. I, I. I'm honestly telling you, I don't really think I will ever go that. I don't know. So, 
You know, do you have any any other than snide remarks for him being running back greedy, Connor? Uh, I mean, when I I I, I do the I, I do the remarks to try to pass uh, sub subconsciously get him to not do it again in a real draft because it scares me because uh, I I don't want to play against that. But um, I I do understand the logic to it. I really like his uh, his running backs and Derrick Henry. And uh, awesome Eckler, I thought well, being that was able nice. To pick up Aaron Jones in the fifth pick of the third round is unheard of. That yes, is yeah. Crazy. That's why I, I forgot cannot... about it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. totally bizarre. That's totally bizarre. You know, you're you're always told like, uh, it's, okay, this lot uh, earlier in the day I did a draft and dude and I it was a great draft and I'm just sitting there just like just like looking at my my roster just like uh, you know just like that and as i'm doing that like his other things are getting picked i'm not even paying attention because i'm just like oh like that and it comes my pick my guy's not there and i'm having to scurry for 30 seconds like, oh my god oh my god my guy my god you know and so i was like you know what you know you shouldn't count your money when you're sitting at the table that's basically what i was doing right but maybe you should keep an eye on what's what, what you have there you know do a slide glance because if you don't you'll end up yeah. as the running back emporium of the league <laughs> yeah go okay. okay so so cool okay you, you like you like the drag awesome thank you man it, it was all value i was just going off value what i saw each round so yeah uh so what's uh what you got there ethan you got the you got to name it off because uh yeah, I, I texted um, an image to you guys. So oh, I, I, I have it pulled up. I can read it off if you want me to. Um, so I've got um, Kyler Murray. This is my quarterback. Okay. Uh, wide receivers, I have the two DJs. I've done this before on, on the uh, show. Yeah. DJ Moore and DJ Shark. Mm-hmm. My running backs, I got Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs. Uh, tight end, I have Evan Ingram. In the flex, I have David Montgomery. Then on my bench, I have Marquise Brown, Matt Breida, Julian Edelman, Jonu Smith, Debo Samuel, and Damian Harris. Um, <laughs> for the kicker, I have Matt Gay. And for my defense, I have the Saints. So that's where Matt Gay went. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Right. I was wondering where that I'm man the went. the kicker emporium. <laughs> <laughs> I have Koo and Gay and Sly. And all those <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 um, I, I, one thing I can't get over is that this was the tenth pick of the draft, right? This was supposed yeah. to be like the like the crap pick, you know, the one that like you're not, you know, you, you're why even uh, try? You know, I, I remember in one of my leagues, the person that got the last pick of the draft literally changed their name to last pick, last to pick, you know, because they were so <laughs> ups- upset about that, you know. Um, so I look at this team and. I'm especially with my starters, I'm happy, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the one spot where I'm uneasy is Evan Ingram because of his injury history. And that's why I think I've said this before. Whenever I pick up Ingram in the tight end position, I most definitely pick up a backup tight end. Um, and I think Jonu Smith as a backup is fantastic. Um, probably what I will do when the season starts is – put Debo Samuel on the IR and go draft uh, or pick up Cam Newton off the waivers. Cause uh, I'm loving that. Uh, or Jerry Judy, man. I'm sure he was there. Or even Rager, you know, was probably there. Uh, no, the, the gut had picked up Rager. Um, that picked up Rager uh, a little earlier than I was hoping to get, get him. I, I got and, something interesting to talk about that situation. Once we get through your draft. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, y'all let me have it. What did I do wrong? um you showed up no <laughs> you picked matt Breida. no I, I i thought it was a great draft no i thought you did i did well yeah. i mean i'm nervous about the edelman i know uh especially probably, you, you probably had to get him like in the eighth round ninth tenth right ninth tenth it was uh last pick of the ninth first pick of the tenth yeah yeah i'm i'm nervous about that you know i mean i i uh we just I love Edelman and like, and I even told you guys that, you know, like if you've been following the show that you know that I'm a big Edelman fan, I always yep. say that, you know, you haven't given me a reason not to, not to like you. Um, but like, I, I know um, Connor mentioned this and yes, you're uh, Connor, you're part of the, uh, you did mention some facts on this, but I've also read uh, research uh, where Sanu dude looks like the better receiver, you know, there at um, on the Patriots. And I remember when I owned Edelman, 
Uh, Edelman was the man. And he was just, I mean, he was always guaranteed to give you a nice floor. Like Robert Woods is, uh, like we're feeling like Robert Woods is going to do this year. Uh, yeah. But, th- but then as soon as Sanu got there, oh my God, you know, it just, it just tanked. And I was panicking because at that time, you know, I, Saquon was down. I had, I drafted Antonio Brown. So Edelman was my rock, <laughs> you yeah. know, so, you know, and uh, so it freaked me out. Um, and then um, Connor m- mentioned something about it, which spurred me to do re- more research. And I'm like, e- I'm nervous about Edelman. Yeah. At that spot, I was looking at Edelman and I was looking at Fuller. And those were the, in my mind, the, the last relevant wide receivers. And I, I just don't trust Fuller to make it through the year. I've Holy never seen him. Do, I've never seen him do it. Yeah, dude. But the time that he's going to be out there, oh my gosh, in the ninth round, you're not yeah. going to get that protection, dude. The best game that Fuller gives you is not going to be anything close to Edel- like uh, or like uh, Edelman's not going to give you the, his best game is not going to be anything close to full, what Fuller's going to give you. But the role that I'm drafting for the second wide receiver on my bench is a consistency play that I can plug in. Not a not a person that might give me zero or might give me 40. And I already drafted Crowder. So Edelman's yeah, the, I was, I yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I, I One thing that you got to keep in mind, dude, is you don't win the, you don't win the league in the draft. I think the, um, the important thing that we're not talking about is he has Marquise Brown on his bench, which is going to really help. I feel like that's going to really help him out. Well, that's why, like, you know, if you're picking on the third bench spot selection, it's kind of like, well, I mean, obviously this is not the guy that I'm looking to depend on, right? Um, but I, I had, I, I would like to look at the stats of, of Edelman when Sanu was there, but pretty, because I had Edelman last year, and he was, I, I picked him about five rounds later than I picked Evans. And there was one of those guys still left on my team at the end of the year who was able to get me into the into the playoffs. And if he's the second string, you know, second off the bench wide receiver, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I, I okay. I mean, no, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, and uh, you know, it's it's your team, so you know, it's about you being happy about it. Um, I think actually, Marquis Brown gives you the flexibility to go for Will Fuller. Mm. Yeah, that's what I think it is because now because you have something that can give you a big play, but you also have something that's going to be solid because dude, there's been a lot of talk about Marquis Brown putting on weight, putting on muscle, twenty pounds. Um, yeah, dude, it, it dude, they've been working. He's been working out in the off season with uh, Lamar Jackson and, and and Antonio Brown. You know, so um, so he's been learning a lot. He's been connecting a lot with Lamar. They've already said that Lamar is going to be throwing more than he was running. Dude, I think you got something really solid with Marquis Brown. So, I, you know, but uh, so you might actually end up throughout the year dropping Edelman. I'm thinking. Yeah, I would be totally yeah. fine with that. I, you know, when you're picking someone that late, you're not, I mean, when you've got that many uh, wide receivers already. Yeah. I mean, so that's a good reason to get fuller because you have that ton of upside. <sighs> but he's, you he injure him. He gets injured and he's out for the year. He's no value. If Edelman, if Edelman is on my bench putting up 10 or 15 points a game and someone needs a consistency, um, you know, for because they one of their they lost one of their wide receivers um, versus Fuller, who plays four games, is awesome, tears his MCL and is out for the year and is useless as a spot. I think, I think – may I, I? I see both sides of it. I think that it's a situational thing. So, for example, if you pick up Fuller, you'd be putting him in, in your flex as that NOS to get you, like, those extra points, right? So you have David Montgomery uh, on your flex right now. Do either of you remember who the Bears played week one? Uh, no, uh, I don't. Well, you have their defense. You should I should know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I know they play someone easy. I don't know if it's the Rams or the Lions or yeah. who. Are the Rams easy this year? I think I think uh Not from to hard knocks. Well, from <laughs> from uh from a, the point of view of me owning the Bears defense, I like that matchup because I don't like Goff at all. I think he's soft. 
I think he's a mediocre quarterback who only plays well with a good offensive line. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's some okay. there's some quarterbacks who can Absolutely. transcend the line sure. issue. Agreed, one hundred percent. I agree with you one hundred percent on exactly what you said. 100%. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I I don't know. Like maybe like if Wolf Fuller has like like a good matchup and you have another wide receiver or, you know, David Montgomery in, in the flex. And it's like, you know, I, 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 that's why you draft Fuller. You don't draft Fuller as this bench prospect wide receiver, which is what Edelman is. So they're, they're different plays. Drafting Will I, Fuller is like, you know, you're, you're admitting you're going to drop him. If I, if I'm picking up a guy out of the Texans receiving core, it's going to be one of your last picks. Brian. Yes, Cooks. Yeah, I like okay. Cooks. <clears throat> okay, we'll see. Like, um, my 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 last thing I'll say about this, and uh, and I and I think with your your logic, I'm not disputing it, saying it's not good. Okay, I'm just trying to give you a different angle, and the way that I look at things. Um, I think it. I mean, just the what you're talking about. Yeah, you, you you're exactly right. You're taking a shot, just like you'd be taking a shot with Fuller. But um, Edelman's a lot tougher. I mean, the dude was playing with broken ribs last year, you know, and so he toughed it all the way through. So I feel you on that. It just, um, if you think you're going to get 10 or 15 points, 10 points, sometime 15, sometime 15 points, I'm thinking you might be able to find that in a pool in a 10-man league. And you could use that uh, because lo- it seems logical that if Fuller, like let's say Fuller's on fire, gives you like 30 points or something like that for a couple of weeks and then gets injured, you know, out for the season, then you can drop him and probably pick up something that's going to produce just like Edelman off the, off the waiver wire. But you would have those two weeks of that extra points, but you know, this, it's just how <laughs> philosophy, you know? <laughs> you know yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I don't, I'm probably not going to play fuller until later in the year though. Cause he's okay. on my, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. No, I got you, dude. And like Connor was saying, like if you if you look at the schedule, it looks like he has a really good matchup. You know, he's playing playing at like uh, the Jaguars or something. Like, they do play the Jaguars twice. I ironically, what I think is great about the whole Will Fuller situation is, um, you guys are basically. What I'm hearing from both of you is, Will Fuller is gonna get dropped by somebody at some point when he gets injured. So you can probably pick him up in the second because. Will Fuller, like, he gets injured, but he does he doesn't always get injured in a way that it's like, oh, he's out for the season. Like sometimes he'll miss like four games, six games, eight games. So he might he might ball out for like four games, get injured for eight, come back week twelve, you can pick pick him up like week eight or something, and he could mm-hmm. actually win win you a championship. There you go, dude. That and that's that's uh that's how you get two rings. And yeah. that's all because of yeah. no waiver wire. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely is, man. I mean, um, Con or uh, Ethan, love your draft, dude. I li- I like it. I think it's scary, and I think it's a, a good example as to how you can maneuver um, with the tenth pick. And the tenth pick is not a death knell; it gives you a lot of opportunities. Um, did you, and you just I think you mentioned it earlier, but or you alluded to it, but I'm going to ask you just for confirmation that when you have the 10th pick of the draft, you have to think about the fact that you're not going to be picking for a long time when you take yeah. the second pick. So sometimes you have to reach for things that you normally wouldn't wouldn't grab in that round because, you know, you're not going to be picking for a while. Is that correct? Yeah. Which one would you say was a reach? Uh, well, DJ Chark was a reach. Um, I oh, reached wow. up. I uh, picked him up in the fifth. Oh, okay. right. Because I'm I'm picking. I was picking at the beginning of the fifth, so I'm not going to pick again until the end of the sixth. Shark is not coming back around. The beginning of the sixth and the end of the fifth. Well, okay, so I must have picked him up at the. I don't have my thing up anymore. I picked him up at least. So where was I at? You if picked I a, Murray in the sixth. I know that. Yep. And then I picked, um, so I guess I picked Chark at the beginning of the fourth round. Whoa, that is a grab. Fourth, yeah. Holy mackerel. Uh, that was a grab for me. Um, and David Montgomery with your fifth? No, no, he was right at ADP when I picked him up. Seven. You probably got him in seventh round. Uh, no, I went, he was my, uh, I picked him and Murray together back to back all right so into the fifth six all i know is that you know how yahoo has the ranking in their adp and yeah 
they were like right they were queued up next he was queued up next so i didn't go down to pick him up or anything um and then i wanted to i can't remember um, anyone else that I did that for. I think I did with Evan Ingram because I needed a, I wanted a tight end and um, I like Evan Ingram, um, you know, just unsure about his injury, you know, risk. But those are the ones that I, uh, Chark was probably the, my biggest reach, but uh, yeah. he was, yeah. he was one of my uh, love targets. So I got to stay true. Yeah, but see, you backed up Ingram with Jonu Smith, which I think is a great was a great pick because that's a good sneaky late pick that that could turn into a tight end one. So I think I think that's a really good uh, good play on you. So I think you backed that up well. Yeah. So I, I I'm not even like it's almost like you're doing with Evan Ingram what I suggested with Will Fuller. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's almost that's what that's almost like what you're doing. So, um, but no. If I had two other tight ends above them, I probably wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I think you did great. I think you did great, especially with the 10th pick of the draft. I think that just shows that, that you can actually be a very dominant team and a, uh, a scary team, you know, and not have to worry about, but you do have to, you do have to worry about reaching whenever you get to those points. So interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you just, I, I think you just have like, um, you know, guys that you're okay reaching for that yeah. you, you are believed, you believe full, fully that they are way below their value. They're nice. way under value. And you're okay picking them up. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so the uh, there's a couple of interesting points. So that's our drafts. That's our draft for this week. Okay. And so we're going to do a, a draft again uh, next week. You know, so uh, like I said, we're running a mock. You know, so that's that's it. I think we all did well. I think we all did well, especially since we all had different strategies. Uh, we all had different ways that we what we focused on, what we valued. Um, and apparently, I love running backs. Yeah, we um, all had running backs. Some of us had a lot. I can't believe us. I had as, as as strong of a running back core as I did with everything you were doing out there. Yeah, I, I feel like when Brian drafts running backs, it's like it's like this napalm that just consumes the draft <laughs> lobby, and everyone else is lucky if they run out, get away with three. I can't stop. I must have more. Must. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I got a fever. Um, no. Um, there's a couple uh, something, dude, um, that I wanted to do um, real quick, okay? Because I want to put some really inform uh, interesting information I wanted to give you guys about um, Philadelphia that I found out. Um, but I also wanted to play a game with you guys, a real quick game, all right? Yeah, yeah, uh, called RBBC or NOT, all right? So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here a little bit. But first, I want to drop this knowledge here. So we were talking about Zach Ertz, right, about how excited you, uh, you guys are. But on Friday, he didn't practice due to an upper body injury and he's considered day to day. And on the same day, Dallas Goddard suffered a hairline fracture in his thumb. All right. Mm -hmm. So they, so they said, okay, great. We'll put the third string uh, tight in and Josh Perkins and he has an undisclosed injury. <laughs> okay. So the only tight ends now are no uh, Noah to and Caleb Wilson. I'm sorry. No, if I pronounce that wrong. And uh, so that's whenever I thought to myself, well, I think this could be Jalen Rager time. I mean, uh, would you would you guys agree with that? I mean, it's you know, cause considering like you're talking about Carson Wentz getting used to somebody and got somebody who's going to be like in the the slot role is going to be a uh, a big a good target. I you know? I did not hear any of that news. I feel I feel uh, even more justified in my Jalen Rager pick now. How about the fact on Friday he didn't practice due to an illness? Rager. That doesn't sound like a, a football injury, so I'm not as concerned. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So if, yeah, it's, if, it, if it's Corona, he's getting it out of the way now. Exactly. Oh, no. Dude, if it was Corona, man, he would be in a bubble and <laughs> an envelope. Yeah. A little bubble boy. <laughs> right. You would know. You would know if it was if it was COVID, you know, so, yeah. It's not the moops. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I thought, I thought that was interesting, you know, because – we were talking earlier, um, I think it was all, uh, before the show, uh, Ethan, you were talking about how there were a certain like tiers of uh, tight ends. And one of the top in the top tiers, you put Zach Ertz. But I mean, if he has the well, I wouldn't put him in the top tier, I put him in like the second tier. Yeah. Of okay. Him and okay. Mark okay. Andrews. Okay. Well, but still, well, right, right. You put him up there with Mark Andrews in, in your mind. And but he has this upper body injury, you know, so that's nerve wracking. Well, and he's, then, he's older. 
Yeah, that's the that's the nerve wracking thing about yeah. it, man. Yeah, you know, it's it's the old people with the injuries. Did the AJ Brown with the hammy? You know, I mean, that makes you nervous. You know, so yeah. you know, so you mean Tyree uh, Kill? Uh, no, well, no, uh, a, or AJ Green, AJ Green, AJ Green. Sorry, AJ Green, wrong color. Yeah, AJ Green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the hammy, you get nervous about. You know, so uh, so yeah, so so just wanted to throw it out there, but uh, no. So this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And this was this was uh, kind of like it happened like uh, like naturally, organically. I know I, I know we're getting close to time, but I really wanted to throw this in there, dude. Because it was just, I'm getting prepared for the show, and I look at all these notes. I was like, hey, this would be a fun game. RBBC or NOT. All right. What so, does NOT stand for? Not or not an R R and R- R- a-, a running back. Is it, it's either running back by committee or not. Okay, but. For the rhyme, you go in OT. <laughs> you spell it out, okay? All right. So, um, so the first one, uh, well, I'll throw it at you. I'll, I'll go back and forth, okay? So, or, um, well, actually, I'll do one for Connor, one for uh, Ethan, and then both you guys will get the last one, okay? So, uh, for you, Connor, Kerry Johnson and DeAndre Swift. So let me just lo- throw a little bit of info down on you, okay? So as you know, Kerry on Johnson has been has been seen walking around a camp with a knee brace i heard that he's he's the knee brace guy now <laughs> yeah, in, his, in his own words that is a direct yeah. quote oh is it <laughs> i'm 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 the knee guy brace now <laughs> okay and uh but on thursday deandre swift suffered an upper leg injury and he's been held out of uh, the last um uh, two practices you know so um they will be uh in your mind so there's not really a clear i have my answer ahead Okay, RBBC. RBBC. R- oh wow! Okay, I know okay. how this game works. Okay, you got it. You got it. Okay, all right. See that easy. That easy. All right, and then uh, for you, Ethan, Melvin Gordon and Phil Lindsay. Okay, the coach will not designate a starter. All right, Melvin Gordon's already reportedly having trouble with the high altitude. You know, so he feels like he's he's not in shape. Phil Lindsay then came out specifically saying that he's worked hard on his conditioning over the off season. So I ask you, Doc, RBBC or NOT? Uh, RBBC. Definitely. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So is there, is there like one more than the other or? Okay. Like maybe, maybe 60, 40. He, here's what I see happening. I, I see Melvin Gordon being the third down back, the passing back. And I was a bug in here. And I see him getting all of the uh, goal line carries. So they'll probably see fairly equal snap counts, maybe slightly, um, uh, maybe favoring Gordon. I don't know uh, on who, who's going to favor, but I think value-wise it's going to be Gordon. So, um, so, but I think it's going to be pretty close, at least so, to start. This- so Gordon's the one to own. Y- yeah, but it's just – I mean, he is, but the cost versus what you'll get out of him is what makes me nervous. When I can, I think it was at the fifth, uh, the the term between the fifth and the sixth where I picked up David Montgomery. I think David Montgomery gives me just as much value as Melvin Gordon does. Wow. Okay. Uh, Connor, I didn't ask you, who's the back to own uh, in Detroit or is there? There isn't. Yeah, okay. So you're off, you're out on Swift. I'm you're out, out on okay the right, only the you. only pieces that i want of the detroit offense are stafford as a backup qb uh galladay i have galladay as my wide receiver too and i feel really good about that if i'm a, in a best ball league I'll, I'll take marvin jones jr so i can get credit for those four games he catches seven touchdowns in, you know but he doesn't do anything the rest of the games and also uh Emo, you you owned Lindsey last year, right? And he was it was it was frustrating seeing him work with yeah, Doc Amigo. It was frustrating seeing him share the load with Freeman. Now yeah. he's got to share with Gordon. But one thing oh. is, oh, uh, where is Lindsey? Lindsey get, is getting drafted so much more later yes. than he was last year. Yes, I mean he's is is, is he later. going undrafted in some? He leagues? really is a Doc. <laughs> Is he going undrafted, or is, is he going in, like, the 12th, 13th? He's going getting drafted. It's, like, a 10th or 12th round where you see him getting picked up. Lindsay? Yeah. I would uh-huh. take a – I mean, the thing is, people are probably going to drop him. And then um, Gordon Gordon could get injured, guys. Gordon is injury prone. And if he's injured – I mean, look, Lindsay, 
uh, he is a he is a tough dude. He he definitely has a chip on his shoulder. You know, he's he's a smaller guy. I saw him get into a fight his third game in the NFL. He got he got I don't know if you guys remember this. He got yeah. ejected because he got into a fight. I mean, he he wants it to be known that he is here. So I think it's funny that he takes that direct shot at Gordon's conditioning. You know, oh, I've I've been working on my conditioning all season. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to throw it out there to see if there's if it's a back to Owens. I know that both you, uh, Doc, you and I were um, very high on Gordon and like picking him third pick, where that's where you have to get him. Or sometimes now he's starting to fall to the fourth. But even then, that's a little high because you can get DJ Shark in the fourth, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Or, so, or or um or you can pick up your fifth running back <laughs> somehow in the fourth round. I figured it out. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so this last one is going to be for both. I'd almost, I'd almost rather take Levy and Bell at this point than Melvin Gordon. Um, oh, yeah, me too. Uh, oh take, my God, dude! Do your research yeah. on Le'Veon Bell, and you wouldn't even like say that like half like half hazard. Do your research, and you know, oh my God, Bell. Uh, the line Says is the guy who drafted him in this draft. I did. And has him on his bench. I thought that he was. And he going was to be on your bench last week too. I thought he was going to be my flex. You thought he was going to be in your flex last week? <laughs> this, week. This, week. This, week. this week, man. No, but uh, if you say he's on your bench because then like, you're not you're not I'm, relying on. Him. I'm waiting for the evolution of Brian's team being. Nothing but running backs. He's he's actually missing on positions because of how many yeah. running backs he yeah. has. Yeah. Like, I don't have a kicker. I, I, just running backs, man. Running back, running back. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, oh, man. Uh, the um, No, but Frank Gore. Frank Gore was always the thing that made me nervous. Dude came up as Gimpy. You know, he's got a hammy. Ah. An older guy with a hammy. You whippersnapper. Yeah. Yeah. So, dude, and they've already in and last year they didn't want like we talked about in the last show last year, uh, Gase didn't want him. This year, you know, Gase wants him. So, you know, um, and uh, but hey, I did say Adam Gase though. So, what do we have to do? <laughs> Matt Nagy. Yeah. Go ahead, say the last one. Bill O'Brien. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so awesome. Okay, so the last one, <laughs> the last one, guys, will be for both of you guys. I'll, uh, who did I start with last time? Last time I started with, with Doc. Let's start with Connor. Um, and this one's going to be out of the field, man. A little weird. Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds, okay? Drake is awesome, as you know. Okay. I have but, I have my answer. Okay, but hang on, let me finish. But Kingsbury Kingsbury feels that Chase Edmonds is a starting running back in the league. Now Edmond, he did have a 126 yard three touchdown game in week seven last year. But again, that was that was over a month before Drake got there. And um and also he's dealt with injuries. But now Edmonds is fully healthy. You know, so um, is that RBCC, RBBC, or NOT? Um, can I? I actually have a have a easier rhyme that I'm using. Go. It's RBBC or BCRB, Bell Cow Running Back. That that that's easier for me to remember, and that's what I think is going to happen in Arizona because the Cardinals they were in a really fast paced offense. I don't think they have time to be subbing running backs in and out. So I think whoever the starter is, I mean he, he might do like a hot hand thing, you know. I, I don't I don't know. He seems to be in the same kind of. There's like Sean McVay, like the Shanahan, not not the older one, the younger one right now, and then. Uh, Matt LaFleur, like, and then Kingsbury, right? They're all kind of in the same group. They're young dudes with, like, you know, oh, like, I have all these cool new ideas or whatever. So Kingsbury might follow suit. But uh, I don't I don't think Drake is, is going to – I don't think it's going to be a timeshare. I think, if anything, it would be, like, 70-30. All right. What do you think, Doc? Um – I mean, if you look at the snap counts at the end of the year when Edmonds got healthy, it's still heavily favored Drake. Um, 
Arizona went after Drake. Uh, they wanted, they wanted the Drake. They loved the Drake. I love the Drake. Um, so I'm going. I'm going that they are not. Um, uh, Not is what I'm saying. Okay, that's my feeling too. Yeah, I, I don't. Th- I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to worry about. But I wanted to make sure and throw that in there because there's a lot of people that will be reading that and start thinking, oh no, you know what's going on with with Drake? You know, Drake's not going to be the 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 big the big with RBC right? The the, the RBBC. Uh, oh, no, Bell Cow back. Uh, BCRB. BCB. Yeah, whatever, dude. We're throwing out a lot of issues. <laughs> it won't be the won't be the Bell Cow back, right? Uh, because of this whole thing about Chase Edmonds. And I, my first thought whenever I read it was, oh, no. You know, but then after that initial, like, like hit, you know, that, that, that fantasy football, like, a punch when you get new information, you know, mm. after, that, after that faded, I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. But I thought about it. I was like, well, if I felt this way, then a lot of other fantasy football players will feel that way. And that actually might make them, like, draft, draft King and Drake lower Okay, which yeah. would be great for you and I, but not good for the people that are listening to our show. <laughs> well, that, and just just to bolster that with some some stats, um, even when it was when it was Johnson and Edmonds, and David Johnson had obviously lost a step. Johnson was averaging thirteen carries a game, and Edmonds was only um, four carries a game on average. And that was between Johnson and and uh, an aging and not as good Johnson and Edmonds. And then when um, Drake got in, I mean, he played 80% of the snaps at that point. And of course, you're right, Edmonds is was battling injuries, but that that maintained even when Ed, Edmonds was back. So um, Brian was 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 right to bring that up and to assuage any fears you may have. Drake's gonna rock this year. Assuage. See, he really is a doctor. Yeah. all right so that's gonna go ahead and do it for the show yeah so we're gonna close going close it out for this week and uh so um we think we we thank you everybody for hanging in there you know to uh going through our mocks you know so we're gonna be doing that next next week and um keep in mind guys please if you like what you heard okay liked what you saw okay if you like the supreme gut stash okay whatever it is you know please hit the like hit the subscribe button you know we it really does help us out it does. Yeah, we feel the love, man. And we'll be able to help you guys out too, you know. And so uh, we record the show late Sunday night and we'll have it up on by Monday morning so we can help you get a jump on what moves to make, you know, based on the events on Sunday, okay, when the season's really, really hitting. Help you get prepared for Monday Night Football. Help you get jump on those, ugh, those nasty waiver wires, man. And, and uh, so, when the, of course, when the season starts, we're also going to be releasing a show uh, for Thursday morning to help prepare you for Thursday night and for Sunday. Um, we uh, in the um, want to go ahead and thank uh, High Volume Music Radio. Thank you guys so much. We love being part of the team, and also our new sponsor. Who is that there, Connor? Sports hosts. Woo! Make sure to and download that- the app, guys. Yeah, how do you get? How do you get it? it just uh, just look up sports hosts at the App Store. It's on Android and iPhone. There's going to be a link in the description to this episode. Just click the link. You'll hop right on. Awesome, awesome. And uh, parting shots, uh, Doc, any parting shots? Um, you know what? Um, if you see something you want in the draft, go for it. <laughs> Even if it's um, a Tom Brady in the first round. Yes. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, just as you know, it doesn't matter how much you have of a thing. Go after that thing. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> yes. That's your parting shot. Because if you do that and you foolish, if if you foolishly draft that many of a thing in a league with me, I will take advantage of it in some other way. (laughs) Take all the wide receivers. Yes. And and my parting shot is always, it always is, guys, no waiver wires. No waiver wires. No waiver wires. End it. It's time to end it. It's time for you guys. To Marxism. It's time for you to come down from the mountains to fight the red menace. It's time for you to scream Wolverine. Can we, can we get that again for the people? (laughs) I actually got got it. All right. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe. If you want to hear some more cool uh, sound bites like that. (laughs) You have a red dot. So. Professional <laughs> as fuck.
Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, or watching. Yeah, thank you for watching. We really appreciate you watching. You know, thank you for watching, guys. We look forward to seeing you guys next week, Lord willing. And remember, everyone, and fantasy football as in life, don't dream it. Be it. Enjoy your week. Peace. See you next time.